In the last video we got some great images of Doris, but in this video we're going to take them into Lightroom and Photoshop and improve them just that little bit more. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video we're going to edit the images that we took from the last video which was when we used the studio lights to photograph Doris, you can see that just here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the images into Lightroom to do some basic correction, then if needed we'll take it into Photoshop to do some more advanced corrections. Now, all the images in that video were out of camera, I have not viewed these images on a large scale, all I did was output them as JPEGs and then bring them into the video for editing and I just shrunk them down to uh, 1080p size. So I haven't really looked at the images because I want to keep it for this video, okay? The first place we're at is in Lightroom. I'm just going to go to my grid view so I can see all of these um, pictures that we took. Uh, like I said in the last uh, video of doing Lightroom, I'm not that savvy when it comes to Lightroom. And um, yeah, so <laughs> again, I'm just going to flag them all as a pick and then I can bring the filters on and select flagged. The first thing I'm going to do is take out the obvious ones that we don't want, okay? So, for instance, the um, the setup pictures where we were setting up the the blue flower. Any side-on pictures, I don't want the side-on pictures. Or top ones, I want ones where she's looking at the camera. So that's what I'm going to take out first. Take out the spider poop, we don't need that. And some of these were taken on my Tamron lens, which is for the uh, the next video coming up where I'm going to try and fix my Tamron lens. So we don't want those. Now I've recorded that at the same time because it's, um, I usually do a couple of videos at the same time. Uh, so we need to take these lot out because they are not from uh, that session. Anything that's got a 50 mil, just here. Anyone that's got a 50 mil, that's from that session, so we'll keep those. Okay, so let's come back up here. Now the second thing I want to do is, I know I took some um, series of images, which is here. And we did that to see if we can do a focus stacked image. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to group those. There we go, group them into a stack. And the same with this one, it's stacking, group into stack. And possibly these ones will group those as well. You can see there's a little folder on those images to say that they have now been uh, put into a group and that there are a series of images, okay? okay? Next of all, we're going to go to develop. And normally I would choose this option down here, which is to go onto my second monitor, but I'm using that as my recording screen, plus you can't see that, so I'm using the one monitor, so we go to the develop. And the first thing we're going to look at is, is the focus on the eyes? And I would say that one is missed, okay. Let's get back to the first one, come think of it. Okay, this, it's okay, but the focus is slightly off the eyes, so we'll, we'll bin that. See how that one is a lot better? That's a lot, lot better. And we're looking for, first of all, focus on the eyes. Any that have missed, we will um, remove. See there? Focus is not on the eyes. Focus is on the eyes. Nope. Nope. Definitely not. No. And this is one of the reasons why I want to show you this process because um, a lot of people think that you can just snap a macro image and that's it, done. That's not the case. I find that you can take 100 pictures and you can throw away 99% of those images and be left with just the one. There are, when you do macro, there is a lot of images that you throw away. So I'm just going to blast through this now so I've showed you what I'm actually going to do. And generally I can tell um, 
without zooming in too much, whether or not we have a good image. <laughs> that's what happened with that one. Right, that's good. Okay, we've got some good ones there. I want to see if we can recover that particular image because it was a good one. Out of focus, out of focus. Not looking at the camera. Out of focus. See, I can see there it's out of focus without zooming in. Look, okay. Now, this one, we have two that are near enough the same. You can see there, it's very, very soft on the eyes. On this one, it's much sharper. But we keep the second one. Okay, so we've narrowed down to a couple of images now. And I said before, I like to get just one image from per, um, per session. So, um, I'll be honest, I do favour this one. This one I don't like. But let's just go through these ones that look similar as to which one is better. I don't like any of those because the... Uh, I don't know what I'm pointing at the screen for, you can't see. <laughs> I don't, I don't like this brown here because it mixes in with a, a backside. I can't remember what it's called on a spider. I'm sure you can correct me in the comments. But you, she fades into the background. I can't see her definition properly. So I don't like those group of ones. Don't like the background on that one. These ones are okay. I've got something creeping in this side here. We could clone it out, but I'm going to try not to, to do that. I'm trying to recover that one if we can. And we have these. Oh man, it's so hard. I don't know what to choose. I actually like that one. I'm not too sure about the, um, the blue in the background there, though. I still prefer that one. That's a nice picture. Okay. Let's work on this one. Let's see if we can recover this particular shot. Uh, we're going to bring the exposure by one, I think. Highlights. We'll drop the highlights down because we don't want to blow those out. Okay, pick up the clarity a little bit. Vibrance. Saturation. As I said before, these these macro shots are always uh, oversaturated. I mean the temperature. Make it a little bit warmer. It looks like we can recover that file. That's the um, that's the beauty of shooting in RAW. We can recover certain files that we like. Let's move on to the next ones. I don't like these three, so I'm going to reject those. And oh god, it's so hard. <laughs> it is so hard. On this one, I'm gonna have to take that out and tone down the uh, the blue. This one's pretty much perfect out the box. And then we have our focus stacked ones. Okay. Let's work on this one then. Exposure's looking good. The eyes are just about in focus. Let's move that temperature slide a little bit. Putting in a little bit of contrast. Highlights. So like I said before, if you move the slide up and down, you can see what they do. We're blowing out the highlights down the corner, so I'm just going to bring that down. Look at the shadows. Yeah, we'll put those up a little bit. Whites. Whoa, we don't want to go too far on those whites, do we? Put that down a little bit. Blacks. Yeah, we won't touch that one. Keep it as it is. Clarity. Put him up. Vibrance. And the saturation. A little bit more. There we go. Now we've done that. Now we can play with the exposure a little bit. I'm just going to boost it. About 70. 70 to 80. About 70. About 71 I'll do for that one. Now we've done that. I'm going to synchronise across the others. Okay. Because we've got a we've got a ballpark figure where we want to be with the uh, the editing. There you go. Okay, 
So the focus stack shots we got, I'm not going to edit those in this video because focus stacking, that's a whole different level of ball game that is, and that we will cover in a different video. So these focus stacked ones here, I'm going to remove those, which leaves us with three images that we could potentially um, edit. Okay. Now, I'm going to go for the middle one. Now the reason I'm going for the middle one is the first one, we have this gr big green patch which comes out of a head just here, okay? Potentially you could edit it there, but it will be a pain in the bum to do that. So we're going to leave that, okay? And this one here, although technically it's a brilliant image, the fangs are showing just here. Can you see there? Got a fang showing. And I don't really like um, the images where the fangs are showing of the jumping spider because that makes them look evil and nasty and I don't want to portray that in this image. Whereas in this one, we have our eyes are in focus, we've got good colour, good composition, our fangs are hidden. We have a few little things that need tidying up and for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into Photoshop to clean up the image and that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to come up to Photo edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now the first thing I want to do now is let's see if my Wacom tablet works. Now as you know from the last um, Photoshop video we did, it didn't work. I haven't touched the Wacom and I know there's been some Windows updates, but let's find out, shall we? Let's see if the Wacom is actually going to work. Okay, it's on, it's connected. Ooh, <laughs> looks like it's working. My God in heaven. Okay. <clears throat> Will it actually paint? Will it paint? That's the question. Right, let's bring up a, um, a red brush and a green brush. And I'm just going to mark on the image the parts that we do not like. Okay, so we have an area here that I don't like. We have... Just make brush smaller. We've got these parts here. Can you see that? We don't like those. There's this here. Now I'm not too sure what that is, okay? I think it might be a mite. If any of you spider experts out there are watching this can tell me if that is a mite or not. Let me just turn it on and off. Can you see there? I don't know, I, I mean, I don't know what it is. If you let me know what it is, it'd be helpful. If it's a mite, I'm going to go nuts and I am going to name and shame the shop that I got them from, if it is a mite, okay? Because she hasn't been fed fruit flies, okay? I know where the mites have come from. And the shop denies the fact that, that, that as they just go, oh, it's normal. They say it's normal, I don't know. But anyway, I digress, rant, rant over, uh, anyway. So, if you know what it is, let me know. Uh, moving on to, uh, to what we were doing, we've got to get rid of this little part here. Okay, that is actually her bungee cord, it's her, her webbing. But she attaches to things when she jumps, so that if she misses her target, she just swings from a bungee. Which is, um, it's, it's a nice little feature, but it gets quite annoying when you're photographing them. And the last thing I want to do is I want to tone down this area just here. Okay. Now... What's good? Eyes are good. Legs, pedipalps, they're good. This area that's in focus here is great. That's all great. I think I don't think we need to touch any of that, okay? So all out of focus over here, which is fantastic. Do some border patrolling. There's nothing creeping in from the edges. But they're all okay. There's this dark area here, but I think we go we can get away with that. So uh yeah, let's get that done. So the first thing we're going to do is the eyes. Let's work on the eyes. And what I'm going to do is just tidy up the image using the spot healing brush tool. Now, the cat's light is great in these, uh, these, these ones. Now, if, if it was one of the images from where I was in front of the light, I would have to fix the cat's light because I would have myself in there. So make sure content to where is selected and we have sample all layers. I'm just going to... Zoom all the way in, and we're going to 
get this little guy here. You might have to do it several times. No, nope, didn't like that. And to fix any major issues, we can just use the uh, the clone stamp tool. You see how I'm having to hold it there? I mean, I don't know. Wacom and Windows, you seriously got to get together and fix your crap, man. Right. Um, I'm not going to be too fussy, so these little bits up here, they can remain. This here is going to be a pain to take out. Actually, look. Let's try the clone tool. Let's see if we can take it out with the clone tool. So, no, that's too far. You see that delay? You see that delay, see it? I don't know what's doing that. And I'm doing, I'm just pressing the Alt key to select the point where I'm cloning from. And then I'm just painting with my uh, brush. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take the other side out just to make it even. I don't know if that is supposed to be there. Is that small? I can't really see these points on on her herself. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. If that is supposed to be part of the spot and I've cloned it out, give me a big ass whooping in the comments, okay? I think it's a mite, okay? I don't know. If you're a spider expert, fire away if I've done it wrong, okay? Let's do this one. Right now, when we come to this big part, we're going to use the um, spot healing brush tool for this. I like to paint it on like that, I do. There we go. Now that took it out quite nicely. But what it's done is left a little bit of a hole. So now we have to come back to the clone stamp tool and just fill in these little bits of texture. Okay, so what you use is the spot healing brush tool to do most of the work. It does a 80% of the work. And then you use the clone stamp tool to clean it up and to make it look just that little bit better. Right, let's zoom out. We've got these this spot here, I don't know why, but that spot there is just, it's bugging me. So I'm going to, have to remove that one as well. There we go. And I do believe the rest is okay. We've got this part here, that's bugging me. Let's just do that. You can see there, spot healing brush tool. Does most of the work, then we come back to the clone stamp tool to clean up the edges. Not like that though, Stu. Let's do it like that. That's better. Okay. You can see the before and the after. Okay. Now next let's deal with the uh, the black spot. The sp black spot of doom on this, uh, this leaf here. And that is these parts here. That part can stay there. This part here needs to be done. Very noisy picture as well. I don't know why, but... I've always find macros are noisy. Let's deal with this. So first of all, spot healing brush. Select it. And there you go. So let's do that part there again. And what it's doing is grabbing this part here. Uh, let's just do the whole lot. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. Now we've done that. What I'm going to do is just go over the edges with the uh, the clone stamp tool just to help it blend in just that little bit more and any time that it doesn't work I just uh, undo it you can see there the little dark patches aren't quite blending in just here let's go in 
we're going to drop the flow of our um, clone stamp. I'm going to brush them over this area, which is the uh, the lighter area. That's too much. Let's drop it down more. Why are you doing that? Why is it doing this for? Look, see that? Damn it! Back on Windows. You got to sort your shit out. Okay. So now I can just lighten that up just a little bit. Okay, so that looks better. Again, let's do the before and after. Now, I just want to see what is going on with this. Let's put the float to 100%. Let go. That's okay. That's okay. Look at that. Why is it jumping back? <laughs> Why is it going all over the place? Seriously? <laughs> Right, let's deal with the red uh, uh, bungee cord here. Now when we're dealing with this, you can see that it crosses over some hairs. So the first thing we want to do is take the clone stamp tool and we're going to clone out um, this part here. So that when we use the spot healing brush, it's not going to interfere with her, 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 her hairs. And it always misses up when that happens. <clears throat> so back to the spot healing brush now. I want to choose one that's just big enough to cover this spot. And there we go. And let go. Let's will it do it? Ooh, it did pretty good. Pretty good. This It's a lot better than it used to be. I'll admit that. Take that part out. We've got this part here. You do have to go over it several times to um, to get it fixed, yeah. So let's do this part. This part does not want to get fixed, does it? Look. But when you get an area that like that that doesn't want to get fixed, just use the uh, clone stamp tool, and we can just do that like so. Zoom that out, and now we have that. Okay. Now, to deal with this area, which it's distracting my eye, I'd like it to be like this color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a new adjustment layer, solid color, and I'm just going to double click on the color and select these blues here. I'm going to change that to color. Okay. I'm going to drop the opacity to about, about 60. And then on the, uh, the layer mask, I'm going to grab myself a nice soft black brush. And I'm going to paint in where we don't want that effect to be. Which is all on the foreground and the spider. Okay. And there we have that. See, we've toned down the blues in there. What we can do now is we can bring up a new layer. I'm going to press Control, Control or Shift E to merge all those layers together. I'm then going to blur that layer. I'll use a lens blue, I think. And we want fairly blurred. God, this rack on tablet does not like sliders, I tell you. Come on. Okay. For some reason, the Wacom doesn't like sliders today. So obviously it's not 100% fixed. I don't want to try it, go away. I'm going to bring it underneath our, um, our fill layer. And then all I did there was I just copied... Let me just do that again for you because I did that quite quickly, didn't I? All I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer mask from our uh, colour layer, press the Alt key, and then drag it down to our blurred layer, and that gives us that, okay? So we have some repeating patterns, which I don't like. You see there? 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in, select a new layer, a nice soft brush, let's put the flow down to 20, even though it skips to 18 for some reason. And I'm going to select the darker blue. I'm just going to paint over it very gently. Okay. A big soft brush. There we go. You don't want it completely flat because that will make the image boring. We want some of that uh, different highlights and that in there. I'm going to do the same over here. Just lower it down. Just reduce that. That way, it's um, it's not as distracting. Now with that done, again we need to add some noise back into the image. So let's come and select uh, an area where we can see our noise, just here. You can see over here we have no noise. I'm going to create a new layer, edit. We're going to fill with 50% grey. I'm then going to change, turn that into a smart object. And if you want to see a more in-depth video on this procedure that I'm doing, let me know in the comments and I'll do a more in-depth um, video. It has the, 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 the how and the why I do this. Anyway, I'm going to change up the soft light. We're going to come to filter, noise, add noise. And mm, let's have a look. It's going to be one or two, I would say 2% noise. I'm going to convert that to another smart object so that then I can increase the size of this. I'm going to increase the size of this to 150%. That will increase the size of the, uh, the artificial noise. Okay, so we come down here and see the artificial noise just there. I'm moving it a little bit too much. Let's just have a look. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to take that back. And I'm going to increase it to 125 instead. Okay, so I've got 125. 125% increase. Now same as again before, we're just going to grab this, um, this layer mask using the Alt key, drag it over the top of our noise layer okay and you can see there it's not quite perfect so i'm going to come into our noise layer and i'm going to increase the noise to three percent that's the beauty of smart objects i've not had to go in there and redo the whole layer once that's done saving it will update this uh this layer and you can see there, that's matching just a little bit better. Right, well, we're almost done. What I want to do, I'm just going to clean up these names here. Uh, the layer names, just so we know what's what. We don't need that layer no more. It's just a uh, color. Uh, color edit. And a noise level. You should really do those as you go along, but be well worried. <laughs> anyway, more thing we want to do, right? Now, if I come down to here, I've just spotted we have a little bit of a border patrol issue. You can see here, there is a little bit of something. I don't know what it is. It's starting to creep into the image. Okay, so I'm just going to take that out. And we will use the clone stamp tool for this. Alt and click to select the area we're going to clone from. I'm going to do something about there. I'm just going to line it up, click, drag up. Now that we've done that, I'm going to select from somebody, somewhere else and just fill in just there and then here maybe. That just gets rid of the repeated texture just by doing that little bit there okay and just there as well okay so there we go that's fixed right now the only thing i mean this is it's a brilliant image 
I love the colours, I love the focus, the depth of field is brilliant. The only problem we've got now is the spider is directly in the middle of the frame, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to use the power of Photoshop to adjust the composition of this image so that it looks better, okay? So the first thing I want to do is come to the, um, the crop tool, and you can do this at the beginning or the end. Generally, I seem to forget to do this, and I'll do it at the end. If you're, if you're savvy, you can do this at the beginning of the edit. And what I want to do is I want to place this rule of third here onto uh, I, like that, okay? Now, because we've come down, we're going to be cutting out a part just here, so we need to bring that up a little bit. And then we can place that on the eye there. Perfect. So we've adjusted the composition now. And we just fill the screen so that it looks a lot better. You might not be thinking that right now, but trust me, it will look a lot better. The final step, we need to fill in this area just here. And Photoshop is brilliant for doing this. I'm going to unshow the noise layer. Then underneath, create a new layer. And we will call this uh, fix. Let's we'll call it fix. Control or Shift E. It's Command Option Shift E, I believe, on the Mac. And then I'm going to grab my marquee tool. I am going to select all of this area up until the point where the focus starts coming in, which is about there. Hope you look. We just zoom in. You see here the focus point starts just here. And this is the magic of Photoshop. Okay, I'm come to Edit. And then we're going to do content aware scale and I'm just going to move that out like that deselect now we have to um, we need to edit do we need to edit the uh, the noise level yeah I believe we do let's come here just to have a look it's so hard to see the noise level sometimes you can see there where it stops. So to do that, very simple to do. We're just going to grab our brush tool. I've already put my rack on my way because it was doing my editing. How are we going to go out with skill on this? And I'm just going to push it away with the mouse. Okay, let's just take a look at that. I'll swap the colours over, just get rid of this. Like I said, if you did that at the beginning, you wouldn't have to do this. But you know us old people, we, we get forgetful. Okay, so let's uh, let's build up these layers. That's what we had before, at the beginning. Then we did the, uh, the edits, the corrections. Then we do the colour. Colour layer. Okay, that is our colour edit, then we did the fix, and we're going to need to copy that layer mask over to there, we don't need to do it over this layer, okay, just need to do it on that one, okay, so now because I'm not on a professional monitor, I've got a lot of banding, so I'm just going to do a little quick check, I'm going to flatten the image, the banding goes away. So if you're if you've not got a professional monitor and you see this banding on your image, okay, it's your monitor. Your monitor physically cannot show the amount of colours that is in the uh, the image. So all you do is you, you just flatten it, okay. So you can see there we have this banding. Can you see it? Okay. And then when we flatten it, the banding disappeared because the um, because everything's merged together now. The, um, the monitor can display it. So that's just a quick check I do, just to double check before posting it anywhere. So that's it for our Doris uh, image. I think that's worked out pretty well. I like the look of it. Um, there's a few things I would change if I could re recompose in the actual camera, I probably would have done that. Um, but yeah, it's come out okay. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something out of it. If you, you learned something, then that, that is good. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. Let me know in the comments why you didn't like it, because that way we can improve, okay? My name is Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for watching this video. And as always, subscribe if you haven't done already. I'll see you on the next one, guys.